Time to play with some clay. Well, today I have an idea of adding something to this, but I'm not going to tell you yet because I'm not sure I'm going to do it yet. Um, but for now, what I'm going to do today is just basically clean up areas and put a little more detail in other areas. And uh, let's get started. Well, I've decided to uh, add something to this, but first let me talk about what I'm going to do. I've got uh, I've scaled these feathers to match his head measurement and I did that on my Printmaster Gold and uh, so I've scaled the ruler which is full size here <coughs> and uh, I scaled down to a ruler that becomes this size here by knowing that the head measurement would be eight and a half heads uh, or eight and a half inches uh, in length from the bottom of his chin to the top of his head. That's the ideal. And now, uh, that's not necessarily this, you know, if he's over six feet tall, it, he'd probably be more like nine inches. But people average heights back in the 1800s was, was uh, five, six, five, nine, uh, five, eight, and around there. So I don't want to make them too big. Because then he'd be towering above her, and she probably was only probably about five foot three or five foot four. So, anyway, that's near neither here nor there. What I've done is I've scaled these feathers to match the head measurement. I, what I did was I took uh, actual feathers. Anyway, I took these feathers and I borrowed them from my Native American friend. And I laid them on a table with a ruler next to them, as you can see here. And that way I could scale these feathers to match whatever head measurements I come up with. I also uh, scanned them into my computer and then drew them out uh, and put a head measurement, uh, average head measurement, uh, as a scale to scale these feathers. And they're exactly the same feathers as uh, there. So that helps me get the feathers not too big and not too small for the figures I do. That way I can uh, look more authentic in what I'm creating. Uh, this is ermine, uh, the white ermine. They were used a lot uh, in, in decorations on clothing and stuff. They had uh, significance to the Native Americans. I also had a uh, ruler next to that and so that I could uh, scale those down too. So everything gets scaled at the same uh, scale and uh, I save it on my Printmaster Gold for the next time I do a head two inches uh, in length. I'm going to add a canine to this uh, set, this figure, these figures, and uh, the, av the type of dog that would have been back in the old west would have been a, a dingo style dog uh, dingoes are relative to australia but they uh, also uh, ended up over here in this country as one of the original uh, canines or dogs uh, in the uh, in the frontier and so i know the Average height is 18 to 24 inches tall, and the way you measure a dog or a canine is from the bottom of his foot to the top of his shoulder. And to, with a two inch uh, scale, that would make six inches 24 inches. And that's uh, what I've scaled this dog skeleton uh, to. And that's about the height of the dog right there. So that's how I scale that, and I'm going to make an armature for that, but I'm not going to show it on this video, uh, only because I'm going to, uh, uh, because I'm going to make a, I'm making a video, or DVD, instructional DVD, on how to create armatures. And 
one of the armatures I'm going to have is is a dog armature. Now it's a generic dog. It's it's it just shows how you can do it. Um, I'll I'll have it on making armatures for horses, for humans, um, and maybe even a buffalo. I don't know. I'm I'm sort of doing this as I go along, and uh, and so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make the. Uh, armature for this dog and uh, and video it and then I'll come back uh, when I have him created. I scaled this drawing of uh, a dog's skeletal structure which I got off of Google uh, by doing a, a search for uh, anatomy of a uh, Carolina dog or or a dingo dog and uh, I ended the, the search line with uh, four artists and that would bring up um, multiple all right there's uh, the finished dog armature um, it's uh, it was fairly easy to make uh, once you know how to do it it's it took me well I, I learned how to make armatures about 40 years ago. You really have to. It forces you to uh, learn. And there was no internet back then, so uh, I had to sort of do this uh, on my own. But fortunately for you, I'm uh, able to pass on my knowledge uh, to you through this uh, instructional DVD. And to you people in YouTube land <laughs> who are watching this video, uh, you'll have to uh, purchase the uh, instructional DVD on making armatures when I get it done um, to see how easy this really is. All right, that's going to be it uh, for this episode of Sculpting with David. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.